the, it just says live. We're live. Like now? <laughs> we are live now. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, right, cool. I don't know why you didn't see the countdown. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today, my name is Maria Desmondi, and we are knee deep into this um, series that we're doing this fall with children's book authors. And uh, I am from Cardinal Rule Press. I am the publisher of the company. And today I'm thrilled to be interviewing Tammy Charles. Welcome, Tammy. Hi, I'm I'm obsessed. Like I want I want to be here, but at the same time, I want to see this on Facebook at the same time. I'm you know, very so the, fascinated by this. This is so fascinating because we are on Facebook. So I will be able to see comments and I'll read you questions that people okay. have. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so, like, so don't find the part of a rural press. Would I see us doing this right would, now? But you might have uh you might start hearing weird sounds. Like it's a delay. So I think this is where we're live and then on okay. Facebook. Yeah, All but right. we can see the replay. My so phone. many people. See? It's on my phone. Oh, That's good. Right. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So oh many. Oh my God! Yeah, I see it. <laughs> I know oh, technology is so cool. Oh, so let's get started because I know people want to know who you are and what you have going on. So tell us who you are. Like, tell us about your writing journey, really. So have have you always been a writer? Like, tell us about what were you like as a child? Um. I asked too many questions. I'm sure my mom would say that. <laughs> um, I was a reader. I loved reading books. I would just read all the books. My mom was a principal in Newark, New Jersey, where I went to school. Um, I think she was a principal for 33 years. So there was like no room to mess up. You know, you did what you had to do and you read your books and you did your studying. And it was just so ingrained in me that that's how I was as a child. Um, and that's how I still am as an adult. And your debut book came out earlier this year, like Vanessa, correct? Yes. Product placement. There see it that? is. You see that, that guys? Yeah. Very cheesy. I don't care. Go was out. Was it spring? Support. What was the release date? Uh, it debuted March 13th. Okay. This year. Yes. So Tammy, March 13th, we're not going to ask you how old you are, but what have you been doing for all these years, what have you, how, how have you been spending your time before the debut book came out? I was a teacher for 14 years. Um, and before that I was in college, but the, the greater, <laughs> the greater part of my adult life was spent teaching. Okay. I taught uh, fifth grade and third grade in Linden, New Jersey. And, um, it was a time of my life. I had a good time doing it. But at the same time, I was writing. And in the midst of that, I was juggling writing and teaching, being a wife, being a mom. And yeah, my plate got very heavy. So I decided to shift gears a little bit and just focus on the writing and obviously my family. Absolutely. So let's pause there because last week we interviewed, or I, I say we, um, I interviewed Laura Gale and she is... She was a teacher for about 15 years before her book, first book came out. I think she has over 20 books now. She's, yeah, she's doing really well. She's kind of like you. She's got all this stuff in the works. It's all happening right now. Um, yes. But I really think some of the greatest writers were teachers. <laughs> oh, yay. I think so, too. I mean, one of my favorite subjects to teach was reading and writing, obviously, but creative writing. Not the, like, write for the test stuff. You know, no offense, but like I liked doing the creative stuff with my the kids. real deal. Yeah, yeah, the real stuff. So, yeah. So, how so when you were a teacher, how would you carve out time in your day to write, and what did that look like? Here's what that looked like. I was a zombie. Um, I would wake up. I still wake up at four most days. Um, four. I would wake up at yeah four four, four. in the morning. Okay. Five thirty is my early time, but four is like wow. I had to do it. I was doing five, but then I had a kid and I was like, this is not going to work because by like, there would be some mornings where he would like join me and I'm like, I'm not getting anything done. Oh, so yeah. I would wake up at about four in the morning and I would write until uh, about 630. Then I would get ready, get us ready for school. I would get him off to daycare and then I would get myself to school. I would teach all day. Um, truth be told, sometimes during my lunch, I would be working on stories. And then when it came to me coming home after school, I had to do all my mommy duties. Once I put them to bed, I would go right back to it. Um, it was it was a lot. 
And here's the deal. The people listening, I, I want everyone to know that published authors, they have to make sacrifices. And every exactly. single person you've heard in this interview has yeah. had to make these sacrifices so that they could get products and content in order yes. to submit. Absolutely. And I think it's it's really just about consistency. I did that uh, juggling writing and teaching and motherhood. I'm still doing that, um, just not so much the teaching part, but in a different capacity. Um, I think it's that consistency that helps. And you have to see the win in whatever it is that you write for the day. Uh, it could be a paragraph. That's a paragraph that would not have existed if you did not get your butt in the chair and your fingers on the keyboard. That's so awesome. everything that you do, everything that you write, uh, whether it's a paragraph or 10 pages, you have to celebrate that and do it That's consistently. Awesome. Four in the morning, you wake up, you have an outline and you already kind of know where you're going or sometimes you just sit there and you're like, what's going to happen? Uh, it's a mishmash of everything. Sometimes I sit down to write and I have this plan. Like, for example, um, I just completed a picture book and I knew what I wanted the story to be about. So I needed to outline that first. But then right. there's other times where I just kind of go with the flow. I'll, I'll throw in some music and just see where my brain takes me. <laughs> That's awesome. So let's, okay, so we talked about the writing process. We talked about kind of what you were doing before. Now you have a book or maybe yeah. you have several books. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not on the shelf yet. We're, we're still not there yet. So now you have like this completed manuscript. Oh, and, oh, the manuscript. Okay. All right. Okay. So you have a completed manuscript. Throwback. Yes. And maybe you have several at the same time and you start researching publishers or was there a journey in there that you that looks a little bit different for us? OK, so you're going way back. I thought you were talking about now. So <laughs> if we if we dial back about 10 years, OK, I had several manuscripts and they were horrible <laughs> and uh, some of them are never to be seen. But what I did do after a while, I, here's I want to dial back. So I. I joined a critique group. Mm. For me, that was essential because you can write all you want. You can write in hiding, but you need people. Like you need uh, a group of fierce cheerleaders that are going to, you know, rip your manuscript apart and put it back together again. And then you can do the same for them. So I think one of the, for me, once I knew I had to take this seriously, my husband said to me, okay, you want to be a writer, you have to surround yourself with people who are doing better than you. Where are they? Who are they? Do they even exist? So once he said that, it was like this light bulb clicked and I said, oh, I, I gotta find my people. So I Googled and that's how I found the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, Women Who Write. Um, I was even a part of the Children's Authors Guild for a little bit. And I most importantly joined a group in Westfield called the Westfield Children's Critique Group. And just finding people to help me, I think that's what helped me tighten up my manuscripts because before them, yes, I was writing, but I didn't know the craft. Even though I was a heavy reader, that meant nothing, you know, if I didn't know what I was doing. So I had to surround myself with those people and yeah, I started going out on submission. Uh, I started querying, I should say, agents. And I did not get any offers, rightfully so. I was not ready. Um, it. I needed more time and I needed more practice. And there was this one meeting that I had with an editor. Her name is Carolyn Yoder at Calkins Creek Press. Um, I had dinner with her many years ago. And this is when I was very new and she's asking me questions about my life. And up until this point, I was writing about like zebras and not, you know, not that that's not good, but <laughs> I wasn't writing anything like special, you know? Okay. And so I'm telling her about my life and she stops me. She cuts me off. She goes, why aren't you writing about that? And something about that just like clicked. And I was like, okay, game on. I need to search within. The real writing comes from my own experiences and putting that on the page. So mm. once I did that, that's when I started writing Like Vanessa. And that was the first book that I was ever able to get an agent to say, I'd like to represent you. <sighs> that's awesome, because it came from the heart. It did, it really did. So is Like Vanessa based on a personal experience or, and then you turned it into a, a work of fiction? Yeah, so 
when Carolyn asked me why, why am I not writing about these um, heartfelt family-based stories and personal experiences, I said, okay, well, if I, I wanted to write a novel so badly, I said, well, what was I like at 13 years old? And one of my biggest memories at 13 was I joined a pageant. Of all Ooh. things, <laughs> I remember that being like such a big deal when I was 13. My mom came home with this flyer that said, like, do you want to be in a pageant? And prior to 13, I spent a lot of my childhood um, studying the performing arts, okay. singing, piano, all that jazz. And when I looked at the flyer, I said, of course I can do this. Like I had watched Miss America every year since I was a little girl I uh, love it. with my family. And this was kind of like a tradition almost like watching the Thanksgiving Day Parade you yes, know, that they have yes. on TV, the Olympics. Yes. I'm like, oh, do you want to be in a pageant? Yes, I can do that. <laughs> the writer in me thought back and I said, you know, as easy as it is for me to think that I could do something like this, what would it be like for a girl who sees a flyer like that and thinks, man, I want to do this, but maybe I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. And it sparked a memory for me because I knew I could do something like that simply because someone came before me and did it. And that person was Vanessa Williams. She was the first woman of color to win Miss America. And then the writer in me said, ooh, if it was 1983 and a girl received a flyer like this and Vanessa Williams had just won, what oh. would she think? So the story kind of unfolded from there. And awesome. Yeah. I love that. You know, when I was in first grade, my girlfriend Jill and I, mm -hmm. we used to make the, what were they called? Sashes. The sashes. Yeah. We would make them out of duct tape. Oh, and, nice. Oh, yeah. And we'd wear <laughs> our sashes. We were totally into it as well. <laughs> but I never was in a pageant. You know, you have some comments and um, there's a gal named Melanie and she said, I love the search within, your quote, search within, and you bring so I much inspiration. Yeah, and she says, you bring so much inspiration to the right what you know advice. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So no more zebras. Now we're writing, um, <laughs> which is no fine. We need we do need people to write about zebras. Yes, so if you're and you know what? One day I will write that zebra story because <laughs> lately some of the projects I've been working on are very heavy and, you know, um, it's, it's taking a toll on my emotions. So I might have to dial back to that zebra story. Lighten it up a little. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so the cool thing, Tammy, uh, let's say, let's date this. When did you get an acceptance? When did you sign a contract for Like Vanessa? Because I want people to really understand the time that it does take. Okay, here's the timeline. I started writing Like Vanessa during NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writing Month. Coming up. Uh, yes, yeah, coming up, people. It, it, it helps and it works. Go for it. I did that in 2013. Um, I had the story. I had bits and pieces like before, but I said, I got to get my butt in the chair and actually finish writing this thing. So during that month, I just got all the words out. And throughout the winter, what I did was I workshopped it. I went back and forth with my critique group. I actually, once I got it to a place where I felt it was strong enough and my critique partners felt it was strong enough. Then I hired an editorial consultant to help me with my submission package. I also uh, hired a copy editor because with all that. And then in the spring of 2014, that's when I went on submission to, I went querying agents and I landed my agent, Lara Perkins, who is amazing at Andrea Brown Literary. Um, she made an offer in June of 2014. Mm -hmm. We spent the entire summer rewriting it. I must have rewritten that story maybe 30 times. I don't know. Um, there, there, I know there is an entire, <laughs> so there is an entire elementary school tuning in right now. They Hi, tune elementary in school. Week. Yeah. And you know what? That's huge for children yeah. to hear that. Oh. She rewrote the book. She's thinking about 30 times. Let me say that again. Your first draft is not your last draft. You have to keep writing and writing and writing. Okay. So um, so we did that. Honestly, we did that for about a year. And um, we did go on submission. We got some good feedback from editors who passed. Um, and then we took that feedback and did some more revisions. <laughs> and finally, I got my yes in September, the week of Miss America of 2015, like 
how ironic is that? And that my editor is Karen Boss at Charles Bridge. Okay, and and then the book was released in March of 2018. 18. Yes. So do the so math, people. Time. Do the math. It this is not an overnight project. This is a process. Five years. Five years. But the cool thing about your story, which I just am so excited to share, is once you got this book, things really started happening. Yes. Things did start happening. Actually, we sold like Vanessa in a two book deal, which was, I didn't even expect that. That was nice. I'm like, you guys want another book for me? Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> so I got a chance to write a second book uh, for Charles Bridge and that's called Becoming Beatrice. And that publishes next September. I forget the date, but September, that's 2019. Awesome. It's a companion novel to like Vanessa. Okay. In the interim, I was writing more stories and we went back out on submission. And I got to tell you, just because you get that first yes doesn't mean that every time you're going to get a yes, mm -hmm. because I still got rejected. Um, and I'm not bitter about it. This is all part of the journey. Yeah. Um, there were stories that I got rejected on that have been kind of shelved for now. Maybe I'll go back to them later. But then there was there were those stories that I got rejections and I went back and fixed it and then we were eventually able to sell. So yeah, there's a lot of behind the scenes action when you're when you're writing. So you've liked Vanessa, the second book in that um, deal will come out next year. And then you also just had a book come out October 1st. Can you tell yes. us a little bit about that book? So pretty. <laughs> Thank you. This is called uh, Definitely Daphne and it just published October 1st with capstone. And whereas like Vanessa was uh, lyrical and there was some heavy content and themes in there, this was just like pure fun. This is about a girl named Annabelle, actually not Daphne. Her name okay. is Annabelle. And she is new to the country. She's a military kid. She travels all around the world with her Air Force mom and her computer geek dad. And um, they come to the United States, specifically Linden, New Jersey, which is where I taught for 14 Aww. years. And um, so she's this new kid in town, new kid in school, and she's very, very shy. On top of that, she learns that her mom is about to be deployed to Afghanistan. So um, her parents, to help her cope with this, they take her to a therapist. And one of the suggestions that comes about is, given that she's such a techie, maybe she could start uh, like a YouTube channel. But in secret, think Hannah Montana. Yeah, <laughs> but this but is so secret, timely. You know, she has this YouTube channel just to kind of pull her out of her shell and work on her, her social skills. So she does that. She creates this video and she forgets to click private and it goes viral. <laughs> And now she's like mortified and she wants to keep it a secret from everyone at school. And the reason why no one recognizes that it's her is because she's all in disguise. In the oh, video. that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So now, definitely Daphne and it just published October 1st. Now for definitely Daphne and for like Vanessa, are they considered middle grade or yes. what, what, what? Yeah. Okay. So um, definitely Daphne, I would say is solid middle grade. Okay. Um, everything in here is just light and funny and, and very rooted within today's middle school experience. Like Vanessa, however, even though it's middle grade, um, it's being marketed for ages 10 and up and it has heavier themes. Um, it's even been on a few YA lists. Okay. So I think that is a cross between like an upper middle grade and an early YA. Okay. She turns 14 by the end of the book. Okay, so that's middle school, beginning of high school, 14. Yeah, right? by the end of the book, she's going into her freshman year of high school. Okay, very cool. And then can we also talk about your picture book or is that still not Yeah, anything? no, we can yeah. talk about it. I, like I said earlier, I'm probably the most, uh, the least published, published author right now. I have, I have, I have quite a few projects, but I just don't have the books yet. Um, the industry mo moves a little slow, but rightfully so. You want to make sure that everything is done um, right. So I do have a picture book. Actually, I have a picture book coming out in January. Ooh, yes. Ooh that's, that's exciting. Well, See? I didn't forget, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's called it's called Fearless Mary, and that is publishing with Albert Whitman. 
Okay. That will be my um, debut. That's that's a nonfiction book. It's about um, a very little known figure in American history. Her name is Mary Fields, and she was actually the first black woman uh, to deliver mail by stagecoach in the USA. So, and she wow. did it during a time where it was like there's no way that you could get a job as a woman. And, um, <sighs> you know, so she really broke barriers, especially for women of color. You know, today we take advantage of the fact that, you know, it's easy to order something on Amazon and it's, it's on our door, like, you know, the next day. But back in the days of the Wild West, you know, these women like Mary Fields had to travel on horseback through rugged terrain. And sometimes they had to deal with people trying to rob them just to get their packages safely to the people. So uh, I, I like that your your concepts, your your books are all creating these characters that are strong females and that Absolutely. are helping to empower our children, which is so timely for, for a time in our society right now where women are definitely in the limelight when it comes to equal rights yes. and all of that. And so this is such a timely topic. I also have really been enjoying um, the different series on women in history. So I'll be looking forward to that book oh, that comes you. out in January. I hope now, you write more like that. Well, I was going to say, so do you have a daughter? I have a son. Okay. <laughs> so my son is my biggest fan. His name is Christopher Sebas Charles. Well, Sebastian, we call him Sebas. Um, oh. He's my biggest fan. And he reads my books. Even, you know, he. it doesn't matter that I write about girls and strong, you know, strong females. But he did ask, mommy, when are you going to write a book for me or about <laughs> me? I'm like, my books are for you. But I, I get what he means. Um, so I don't have a daughter, but I have him. And I, I do look forward to moving into writing um, prominent male characters in my future work. Fantastic. Fantastic. I know we, we do what comes natural, but you know, maybe part of that is that you don't have a daughter and then you, you're writing for them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Now I have to write something for him. <laughs> there you go. Oh, this has been so wonderful. And let me see. I think we just got another. Oh, we're just getting lots of hearts. And Tammy, do you know Samantha Margolius? Because I think. Yes. Hey, Tammy. Samantha, okay. Samantha is my former pageant winner. So <gasps> not only did I write this book about a girl who does pageants, I did pageants and I actually directed pageants for about nine years out in the Boston area. So Samantha is in Massachusetts and she's one of my former winners. So that's, oh, cool. that's thank so cool. Samantha. <laughs> and uh, Melanie says, thank you for sharing so sincerely and openly, Tammy. What advice can you share for writers who are working to polish the craft, but they're not yet published? What advice can you share for writers who are working to polish the craft, but are not yet published? I think I can answer why you think about that. One of the things you said was um, how much value you got out of your critique group. So yes. Melanie, if you don't have a group of individuals, one, one. I loved what your husband said. I actually wrote it down. Um, you want, if you wanna be a writer, you have to surround yourself with people who are better than you. Yeah, find, find the people that are doing what it is that you want to do and study, study them. It doesn't mean that you're being a copycat because really you're just, that's just a new source of inspiration. And that's what I've done. Like there are some children's book writers that, and they know because I shout them out all the time. And I just, I drool on the heels of their success, not in a way where, oh, I want to do what this person is doing. No, I'm going to take that inspiration and pour it into my own work. And honestly, piggybacking off of that, if I were to give any advice to someone who's trying to enter the children's book industry, I would say, put your blinders on, you know, like, this is such an incredible industry. I've met great people doing this. I really have kind, open hearted. Um, but, you know, I can't look at what the next author is doing and judge that against my own success. Mm -hmm. If I wrote a paragraph today, I'm going to celebrate that. If you made the New York Times list, I'm going to cheer for you too, but I'm not going to use that as an opportunity to tell myself that I'm not doing enough. Yeah, you're so, going to wake up the next morning yeah. and you're going to write your next paragraph. Exactly. So you really just have to put your blinders on and you can do that and still, you know, be a cheerleader to other writers. But at the same time, you can't measure yourself against them. So just yeah, be so consistent. Beautiful. That's it. Just be consistent. 
I do want to point out one more thing you said, which was really great. You, um, you had submitted the book. Once you had an agent, you were submitting and you were getting feedback from editors. And I like that you took in that feedback and you either made changes or you didn't, but you know, criticism and feedback is not always a negative thing. It's these people, these editors are experienced, they've been doing it for years. And so you took that and you said, we continue to work on that project. Yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So Melanie, I think once you do join a critique group, make sure that you go into it knowing that the feedback is there to help you not to hurt you. Yeah. And you need to have a thick skin. Like there's no, there's no room for, oh, you know, this critique hurt my feelings. Mm -mm. Get over yeah. it. <laughs> And I'll say this much, just because someone critiqued something about your story, and what I love about working with Karen Boss is she tells me all the time, this is what I think, but this is your story. So mm -hmm. you are in the driver's seat. You don't have to take a piece of critique that you don't necessarily agree with. Take every piece of critique with a grain of sugar, not a grain of salt. Don't let it hurt you. If you don't like it, move on. But if you think that there's a nugget of wisdom in there, dig it out. Oh, I so I like I, I write quotes down from the interviews for the blog post because we'll eventually put this on the Cardinal Row Plus Press blog. Okay. And girl, you are like left and right. Woo -woo. So many wonderful nuggets. <laughs> this has been awesome. And I want to definitely leave all of our viewers and our replay viewers. This is Tammy Charles. If you're just tuning in, you're going to want to rewind because not only did she tell us to put those blinders on, take it with a grain of sugar. I mean, so many helpful nuggets. All of that. Um, fantastic yeah. point. Every, such positive feedback. So you'll definitely, Tammy, have to hop over to Cardinal Rule Press Facebook and read the complete oh, yeah. list of all oh, the comments yeah. of people. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, like Vanessa already out and same with definitely Daphne, Daph, Daphne, Daphne, yep. <laughs> check those out. And it sounds like we have a lot to look forward to as far as Tammy Charles author books coming out in the near future. Thank, Thank you so yeah. much, Tammy. Bye. Bye.